Mr. Paul Gilbert. Mr. Nick DiVirgilio. Here what? we are in Thailand together, ready to rock the house tonight. How cool is that? Take a look at this place. So we're here to talk about your gear. I've got a bunch. You've got a bunch of gear. So where do you want to start? We'll start with the guitar. Okay, please. Well, actually, let's start with the pick. I bought a four millimeter hole punch and I've been putting four holes, four four millimeter holes into the pick. Gives me a little better grip. There's a bunch of different ways to do that, but I, I just, it makes me feel special. <laughs> and uh, this is a, a Tortex, Tortex 3. It's a 73 millimeter, I think, with a little point on it. Using the same sort of thickness of pick your whole life? It's a little, no, it, it's varied wildly. Okay. And this is a little thicker, actually, than I've been using. It might be a little better for the fast picking, I don't really do that much fast picking, so it, it, it's it's sort of a non-issue. I, I lose a little bit of the pick scratches, like the .50 really is magic for pick scratches. Okay. This has like the pick scratches are okay, but I, I suspect that some of the picking stuff might be a little smoother with this one. Whatever works it, for it, you. It, it's, it's today's yeah. flavor. <laughs> nice. Speaking okay. of today's flavor, we, the matching the pick is, is this yellowish guitar, or a cream burst, as I've titled it. This is Ibanez um, PGM 1000 T. Guess what the T is for? What is the T for? I think it's for through, like neck through. Because uh, this is like a one piece of wood all the way through. Right. You know where I really notice it is when I put the guitar down on a stand and I pick it up again. I mean, playing it's nice. Right. But man, it seals so smooth when you pick it up and put it back down. Now, did you design this guitar from the ground up? Kind. Of, well, I mean, if you go way, way back, it's a, it's a, and I actually, I don't know which came first, the Ibanez RG or the Ibanez Gem which is the Steve I one. And they both came out around the same time. I'm not sure which, which was first. But initially didn't want to play that style of guitar because it was so associated with Steve Vai. Right. And I just wanted to be different. But then I tried an RG and I was like, man, I was pretty digging good. it. It sounds good, it plays good, feels good. And uh, so that's where I came up with the idea of putting the F holes on it. Because it just looked different enough. It, it didn't really, it took away some of the metalness in a way that I like, because f holes are usually associated with classical music or jazz, neither of which I'm particularly expert at, but <laughs> it, it, it just gave it a, a look that was different than like the heavy metal pointy strat. These are Air Classics. I have a couple different DiMarzio signature pickups, and these are not them. My signature pickup is a single coil style, like hum canceling and also a mini humbucker. I've never had a DiMarzio signature humbucker. It's because I like this one so much, I wouldn't change anything. Right. It, it just, it works as it is. So I, I, I don't want to mess around with it. I did take some, uh, you know those big rectangular white erasers? I, I put some of those underneath, I, I cut them up to, to the right size with, a, with an X-Acto knife and put them underneath to, to, to really stabilize the pickup, which you'd never notice unless you're playing a big hall and you're at like stadium volume. And that keeps the guitar from going, you know, the, prevents the low rumbling feedback. I've never heard feedback. of that before. That's why. Wow. It's non-issue in most cases, but I knew we were going to be playing plays like this, so okay. that's what I did. Now, you have a black guitar here with you as well. Is yeah, it that's this? also that's a new signature model, the uh, PGM-50. Okay, so it's different than this one. It's a different color, and it's, it's bolt-on. Okay. But, man, it sounds good, too. It does sound great. And, 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 I really, and it looks good. I, I, I've, I rarely play black guitars. But it has binding on it, so you, it doesn't disappear with your black clothes. Sure. But I'm wearing kind of a blue shirt today, and, and yellow and blue look better together. So these, that's the considerations. <laughs> and you can tell I put a lot of effort into my look. But, you know, you got to take it where you can get it. You look great, man. Yeah. You look great. I've got a 50-50 uh, a, a half coily, half straight Divine Noise cable made in Portland, Oregon by uh, Gil Divine. With a muting jack, so I can I can unplug it, I can plug it in, and there's no, you know, it doesn't make any noise. With a coily cable, I don't even have to run it through the strap. You know, if I step on it and move, you're good. Yeah, you're not good. So pull it quick up. guitar changes, and I've got my clip-on tuner, the uh, the Polytune by TC Electronic. Oh yeah, classic. These really are. I mean, I haven't tried every one, but but I didn't have to because I like this one so much, and I have one on those every guitar. I had to get used to having you know a thing. Right, hanging off the edge because initially it's like, you know it's like that might be kind of nerdy looking, but you know I'll, I'll take nerdy looking if I'm if I can be in tune. That's that's a trade off. That's part of the gig. Yeah. Okay, so here we go to the uh, my my first time I've used a dual pedal board, and we got uh, this one actually I, I had more pedals on it, but they were making some noise at at, at the Budokan. 
Budokan in Japan, for some reason, it was it was like there was some it was a noisy gig in terms of like whatever was in the power. Okay. I don't understand the physics of that, but you know, I, I just started taking pedals off until it wasn't noisy anymore. Okay. And I ended up with this, and it's working, so I'm I'm keeping it. All right. So the first one is actually the pedal I probably use the least. There's one song. This is the Octron Fox Rock. <laughs> And we have, we have a song that we tune way down from where we used to play it, and I just don't have those notes, and I don't want to bring an extra guitar just for like one riff. Right. So I, I turn that on instead of being... <laughs> so it just makes me sound like I've got a lower note. It That's, sounds, it it sounds fat, too. Yeah. I might like... I've got an older Fox Rocks with less switches on it. I might like the older one a little better. But it's at home, so we'll switch that out later. This one's <laughs> certainly doing the job, but sure. something, something magic about that old one. All right, the next one we have is a jam pedals. It's some kind of vibe. What kind of vibe is it? A retro vibe. So this, you know, I'm a big Robin Trower fan, so. you squunch up your face yeah the great rock guitar little, face there really nice good. vibe pedal now next we have a colossus who makes that one that one's a mojo hand and i i've i, I bought that because um eric gales i, I, was, I, you know, I, I like his tone and I, and I don't know if he still uses it but i just I was, you know googled what right. his pedal board was and he had one of those so i, I got one and um, it just has this really like here's without it you know <laughs> Is with it, you know, all the ready my face. You, you know. <laughs> so it just it thickens it up a lot. Yeah. Now, I've, I've, let, let's count how many overdrive pedals I have. Okay. There's one, two, and then over here there's three, four, five. Of, of you know, five either like boost, or, you know, they they make more distortion if you put them together. Sure. So. If I do have that on, it's not by itself. It's going into the, the ones that are always on, which we'll get to later. Uh, next one is my signature pedal, JHS PG-14. And that's, I mean, it, it, depending on how you have it set, it really does different things. At the moment, I've got it for like the more precise picking stuff. Okay. So if I'm doing like a... <laughs> It seems to grab that stuff a little better. Now that was some fast picking right there. Well, that, that's the thing though, I, I fooled you because it's not 100%, but if, if you do enough, it sounds like it. Right, right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I should mention that the uh, the patch cables are all DiMarzio. Okay. Super strong, I've never had one break ever, and plus they're cool colors. Nice. And I, I spent a lot of time making sure the colors are right. You, know, you got the pink knob, you got the pink cable, you got some orange, you got an orange cable, and so, you, you got to get the colors right. You thought about this, for sure. Yeah. yeah. If, if, if you're going to have a lousy haircut, you might as well have cool-looking cables. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's... And it's all it's all powered by the uh, the Voodoo Labs Pedal Power 3. Okay. The, a vast improvement from the original ones, because these work with any voltage. And that's a big deal when you're touring, because sure. I used to blow up a lot of them. These these are, like, unblow upable. Okay. All right, so now on to the main pedal board. Now, this is something... The, the, this Boss Line Selector... And you, you can see, like, I've got all this, you know, electronic spaghetti. And basically what's happening there is there's two loops. And it's one or the other. One is, like, the, the clean side, and one is the distorted side. The clean side just goes through a Boss compressor and bypasses all the, all the leave-on distortion pedals. So if I do that, you know, I get a real nice, snappy, clean sound. I don't usually turn on the chorus pedal. That's, that's, it's nice to be able, and the nice thing about that too, because it bypasses all the distortion stuff, I don't have to worry about turning the distortion pedals off. Because even if I have them on, they're all noisy going, you know, then as soon as I hit the, the clean sound, it's all bypassed. And then if I want to go back, I just press the, the boss line selector, and now I'm 
back with, to my leave on distortion pedals or you know whatever's on that loop. So before we get there, the, the, the next thing is the, co the chorus. Now the chorus is actually, in, in terms of the signal path, it's way at the end. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's after the distortion because it, it sounds a little s s uh, smoother right. there. But, it, but, it's, but I, uh, one of the things is like, since you're playing live and singing, you want the pedals to be the, like the one you hit the most. You want it to be like right where your foot is going to be while you're singing, so you don't have to look at it. Sure. And that's not the chorus. That, that would be like this this, this overdrive preamp. So uh, so I, I move the chorus like almost there because I hit that like probably the second most popular one to hit. Okay. But you got to line it up with your vocal mic so you don't have to keep looking down. That's a cool trick. I never yeah. heard of that before. I right. still look down more than I should. But <laughs> then we got the overdrive preamp. Now, that's kind of my main. That that's on actually quite a bit. But I, I turn it off when I'm not playing because then it would be noisy. You know, there's a fair amount of hiss. Right. So when we're doing like just a, a heavy rhythm, you know. <laughs> you know, for that kind of stuff, I'll have the overdrive preamp on. Then as soon as I'm done playing, I'll turn it off and that's basically my noise gate. Volume down and the right. preamp up. Right. So I gotta, I gotta, you know, be mindful not to just leave that on and walk away. Then, it's <laughs> then the, the other two just, uh, drive pedals that are always on are the the Busta Grande by uh, BBE. Yeah. With, with a cow on it, basically just a clean boost, and the AC Booster by Exotic Effects, which is pretty subtle distortion effects. If I if I turn all those off, I mean, this is what the amps. It's real clean. Right. And then if I, you know, turn on the AC booster, you know, that's something. And then you, you boost a grande, you know. And, that's, and my face is starting to crinkle up in a good way. <laughs> and the overdrive preamp. And if I add the mojo hand. <laughs> Or the JHS. <laughs> yeah, we're talking. <laughs> so, so the right. uh, the last one, I think. It, oh no, there's two more. Okay. I've got the Vent by Neo Instruments, which is a Leslie simulator. Okay. And that is, it takes some practice to get used to it because there's two different speeds, like a Leslie. You know, a real Leslie speaker has been you know, is a slow speed, you know, and also as the fast speeds. You press the button and it ramps up gradually. You hit it again and ramp back down. So it takes some getting used to because. Whatever you hit, whatever you have it set on, you know it's there. But if you quickly want the other thing, it, it takes a minute to get there. So you got to sure. kind of pre-plan your speed. I found the main thing I've been doing with it lately is leaving it on the fast speed, and then I, I hit it on there. So immediately, the first thing you get is just like the, the warbly, you know, wah 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 wah, and then I slow it down because that's kind of a nice dramatic sure. ending. You know, you're playing a, a chord. <laughs> That's a nice thing to mess around with. Very cool. The, um, the very last one is the Bell Epic Echoplex Simulator by okay. Catalan Bread, another Portland company. And it's just real subtle. In a room like this, I probably don't even need it, but I used to have just that little da -da. Right. Yeah, I can da -da. hear it there. Yeah. And it, that makes me, um, it takes away like the, the dryness a little bit, so it's a little easier to play. And it just reminds me of the old Van Halen records. You okay. Know, that Eddie always had an Echoplex. Important for today's rig is the radial a uh, shotgun, which is a, a, a splitter, so you can run more than one amp. Everything you've been hearing now is, is my monitor amp. I'm using a, a twin reverb. And, and keep in mind, like, what, you know, Mr. Big is a band that is not as famous as the Rolling Stones. So we don't quite have the budget to like have our own Boeing 787 right. Flying jet gear everywhere. With, with giant road cases of everything we own. So it, it, it makes financial sense to, to, to rent the back line. Sure. And I've, you know, I've realized that the, the, you get the best results 
if you go for what you know is reliably, you're, you're going to be able to, you know, to get from backline companies. Sure. You know, are you going to be able to get some esoteric, perfect head that's with, with the tubes in perfect condition? Probably not. Can you get a Fender Twin Reverb that's, that's working pretty well? Prob you probably can. Right. So I, I decided I'm going to get, like, cause basically I get all the distortion from the, from the board, from the pedals, and then everything else is clean. So I'm just looking for a good clean sound. So I got a couple Fender Twins, one as a monitor in front of me and, and, and one back here. Right. Which I, I rarely use because, it, but it's, nice, it's just nice to have a spare just in case. Okay. And then I've got a, a Marshall uh, 1959 SLP, which is a real clean amp, and a, a, a Roland uh, Jazz Course. So it ended up being way more than I needed. And I thought, well, the Jazz Course really has a nice chorus effect built into it. So I, I ended up running the, the, uh, the shotgun into three amps, my Fender Twin, which is my monitor, the Marshall, which is the main rock and roll amp that everybody right. hears, right. and then the, uh, the, the Roland Jazz Course mixed in like, I don't know, 20%, just has a little uh, extra chorus. Okay. And since we're a three-piece band, you know, it helps fill, fill it out, out a little sound. bit, so right. it's, it's just always on. I let the sound engineer decide how much to use. Okay. And, uh, and with the shotgun, you can make sure it, you, you solve any phase issues, any hum issues, and, and we've been to some crazy places, and it's 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 been zero problems. It's amazing. We've been 100% reliable the whole time. Okay. So your all your distortion goes through both amps. It's going through the Marshall and the Jazz Chorus. So basically, all the amps are running clean. Okay. And, and then, right right now, like I, I don't want to blast us out, no, so I'm, I'm just running through my monitor amp right, 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 right. now. But uh, you know, everything else sounds similar. Right. I said the, the one thing, like when 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 you get up to like, you know, you're playing a big venue and it's a loud volume. Right. It, it's really like an an Einstein relativity shift in terms of how everything feels and sounds. Like it's really different than playing in your bedroom. Sure. And so, well, we've gone from gigs that have been incredibly dry in the venue, no reverb at all, to halls like this where it's very right, reverby. Yeah. And, and, uh, and actually, that, that comes down to like the, I, I have uh, foam earplugs right. that I jam into my ears, and, and all I'm really hearing is like my really loud monitor, which is right in front of me. Right. And I control the volume. If it's too loud, I, you know, I, I've, I've got a knob right in front. I don't have to talk to the monitor engineer ever. Sure. And then I've got a wedge, and I've got kick and snare. There might be some toms. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and then I just look a lot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> You're like for the, any high, I can't even even without even if there was high end in there, I probably wouldn't hear it. So you know, when you when when you do Nick here, who's also filming this, is very kind to to me when it comes to like going. Well, we're in a bit. You know, we got to help <laughs> each other out, right? Yeah. I'm, you're re reading the lips of the one, two, three, four, <laughs> and and just keeping it, and and also. You know, I think you can hear you can hear me enough. Yeah, for sure. Where, uh, where if, and if there's a guitar break, right? And I, if I speed up or slow down a little bit, you can you can follow. I follow me. you exactly. So thank goodness for for drummers who are willing to, to listen to oh, me. You have to. You have to. <laughs> cool. And then you have an acoustic guitar and acoustic electric. Oh yeah, let's show that for a second. Let's okay. See. All right, here's my acoustic. This is a a Go Dan. Great. Yeah, great. I'm not sure if that's the correct pronunciation. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a. Uh, it's a Canadian company, yeah. And uh, this guitar is really good for high volume stage situations. Because you know, you, you, you've probably seen like the rubber thingy that people put in the sound hole. Right. That definitely helps a lot. But man, I, I've, I've done things with, with like beautiful, great sounding acoustic guitars, and then you know, as soon as like the, the bass guitar hits a G note. It's, it's all over. The, the, the top of the guitar just takes off, and it's, right. and it's a, a feedback monster. And uh, this, this one really holds it together. Just I don't have any feedback problems. Right. And uh, really the only problem I have is, is figuring out what all these buttons and knobs do. I looked it up, and I just labeled it. You know, it's a bass, mid, treble, volume, blend, phase, mic, one, two, three, four. And this is the volume. You know, so I, I, but I could never to memorize all that. I don't quite have the mental capa <laughs> capacity, so I, I just labeled it with some tape. Whatever worked. Here, of course, is the Ibanez PGM50, brand new signature model. I should mention I've made one modification, which is I took a two inch neodymium magnet and covered it with gaffer tape and attached it with uh, double sided tape. And that holds my magnet on there. Yeah. I mean, it holds my slide. Sorry, this is right. a Dunlop 
a 318 chrome steel slide. And it takes some, um, it takes some practice to get used because you get it with your left hand. You, you sort of, you know, you got to be able to find it blind and then you take it off and you... <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's, it's nice because that's always a problem with sliders. Like you, you know, you get it, and it's like, uh, where? It, yeah. So that that solves that problem. And, uh, this and is it's not, just it, a sharp looking thing. It is the colors, even on this camera here. Yeah. The I love gold the is uh, really jumping out. I love the the sure grip knob too. Okay. So I use I, I use the volume knob constantly, and so that, that's that's important to me. And then I'll, I'll show you the last one. Oh, it's a 1978 three-handled moss-covered family Gradunza. Actually, it's an Ibanez Iceman, an IC200. And my uh, guitar repair guy back in Portland, Sam, man, he did the most amazing job repairing the, uh, the cavity because somebody had put a Kaler on it, Kaler Bridge. Okay. And, and the Kaler routes is, is, is you know, is just a horrible, Thing to do to a guitar, and he managed to, find, to like stain the wood and fill it in. And you'd never know there was a Kaler on there once. And we've got a Demarzio. It's a Tone Zone and an Air Zone. A little different than the uh, Air Classics, but I love these two. And uh, it's got a phase switch, which I actually never use live, but it, but it really does sound cool. <laughs> Without the phase switch. Wow. So it's, it's, it's totally different. Kind tones. of a magic little little yeah. tone up there. That's neat. And it just looks. Well, I mean, I'm a big fan of, of Paul Stanley from Kiss and Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick. And this is, you know, that's what they were using back in the set. Well, Paul Stanley still uses one of these. Well, he's right. got shiny stuff. Right. And. Uh, that's, that's my whole rig. I, th I don't think I've forgotten anything. No, man, you showed us everything. I think that's that's the whole the whole the whole banana. There you go. The whole thing. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Thank you, Paul. Right on. Have a great gig tonight. All right, you too.